Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the much anticipated hotfix pre-release for Sim Update 7. What's in it, how it can help us, and more importantly, how to get it. We've got that coming up next right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Okay everyone, so first I would like to go over what exactly is in the release for this hotfix. A constant menace to pilots are the gremlins who wreck planes. So you know what to expect when you download this on your PC. We can see here it's going to take care of many different stability issues with crashes that a lot of people have seen across the board. Next, it's going to take care of that pesky little live weather bug hopefully, and no longer will you have to switch out a live weather mode when you go above 20,000 feet. So that is a welcome, welcome fix. Next, it's gonna fix several different issues with VR. If you've been having problems with your toolbar not working, not being able to click on things, well then you're in luck for this one because it's gonna fix all of those problems. And I can attest to that because I've been using VR for the past couple days and it's been working flawlessly. If we take a look down at the peripherals section, we can see that track IR has been fixed, everyone. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this, and here it is. This is the fix for that pesky little track IR bug that keeps dropping out all the time on you. In the plane section, it's gonna fix several different issues with third-party planes. I know many people have been having issues with reverse throttle, Next on the list, we have the world fixes, and this is gonna take care of some roads that were blinking and some color banding issues. If you are a fan of the Reno races, well, there is a couple fixes there for you as well performance optimization for the Reno multiplayer races, as well as Reno stands are no longer misplaced during RTC. One of the biggest issues that most people have using this sim is with the user interface and all of your assistance menus turning to easy every time you boot up. Now for some reason it wasn't saving your settings after you set those and hit apply. Now in the hotfix, they have taken care of that issue for us. Let's talk about how we can get our hands on this hotfix. Now, remember, this is a pre-release for the hotfix, so before you download anything, make sure you read all of the release notes. Okay, so now you know what's in the release notes and how it can help your flight simming experience. Let's talk about how to download it. First, you need to go down to your start bar and open up your Microsoft Store. Once the store is open, go up to the search and you're gonna type in Xbox Insider. After you type in Xbox Insider, go ahead and click on the Xbox Insider Hub. After you click on that hub, because I've already downloaded it, you're not gonna see a download option here, but you will, so go ahead and click on the download option for the Xbox Insider Hub. All right, so now that you've got that downloaded, Let's open up the hub. And uh, what are the hubbub? Bub. So we can see the next step in the process. We're done with the Microsoft Store, so we can go ahead and close that out. All right, so once you have the Xbox Insider app open, you're gonna see a couple menus populate down here on the left-hand side. All you need to do is go to the Preview tab, and it's gonna bring up all the different previews that you can join. Again, I can't stress this enough, that make sure you read all of the release notes for this hotfix. Next, you wanna go ahead and click on the Microsoft Flight Simulator Sim Update 7 update. Allow that to open, and then you're gonna have a tab here that says Join. So after you hit the Join button, it will now allow you to download the updates for the hotfix. And we are pretty much done with the Xbox Insider at this point. Okay, so now after you've joined, it's now gonna prompt you to then download the new updates for the hotfix. Now it may open the Microsoft Store up here for you to do that. 
and it may populate over here on the right hand side just as it normally would. Well, you can go ahead and click updates and see if it downloads for you. In my case, it did not start the download at all. So I'm gonna show you the workaround that I have for that if you run into that same situation. If not, and you click the get updates and it does download the update for you, then you don't have to worry about this next step. But if not, follow along. So the first thing that you wanna do if it's not downloading for yourself in the Microsoft updater is you wanna go down here to the search bar and just type in Xbox. If you don't have the Xbox application, which most people probably do, but if you don't, make sure you go to the Microsoft store and download that first. So next, you wanna go ahead and open up the Xbox application. Once you do, you will have this nice little screen populate for you. As you can see, I have an update right here that I have to do. So over here on the left-hand side, we'll list all the different games that you have for your Xbox. You wanna find the Microsoft Flight Simulator symbol. And when you do, if you hover your mouse over it, as you see here, we have a little play button, but because you need to install an update, it's gonna be a little circular round arrow and pretty much says you need to update. So you can go ahead and click on that and it will then download the update for you. Now, after that download has happened, you may still see that the update is in the Microsoft Store that still needs to be updated or downloaded. At this point, after the Xbox has downloaded that update, you can come back over to the Microsoft Store and then just tick on Get Updates again, and then it will go ahead and download it. At least that's what worked for me. It will then be removed from the Updates menu at the top and be put down here in the bottom for your installed applications. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, you can go ahead and close out the Xbox application and you can close out the Microsoft application. Next step is go right down below and start the simulator. And once you start the simulator just as before, it will bring up the screen to where you can click on download or update and then it will then start downloading the update for you. So as you can see here, the download file is 694 megabytes. Once that finishes up, it will then start up and you will be good to go. Now, again, before you do any of this, make sure you read the release notes for the download of the hotfix. All right, so that's about it for today, everyone. If you got any questions, please post those down below in the comments section. And if you haven't done so already, make sure while you're down there, you hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. If this video did help you out today, make sure you smash on that thumbs up button. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you on the next one.